hello everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you all are doing great today in this video we are going to talk about uh, microservices what are microservices why we actually need them what are different types of microservices let's talk about why we need microservices like what what was the problem with it and basically what are microservices so robert c martin introduced a principle called a single responsibility principle it basically states that gather the things uh, which change for same reason and separate those that don't change that don't change so basically that means that uh, we should keep all the things which change for a specific reason together and uh, those which have completely different use or completely different function we would keep them as separate now we will see how do we determine that uh, these things are same or different or like what do we mean by they are for that same reason or not so it basically microservices are based on this principle only uh, it simply means that extending to the loosely couple services so we have each service for a different different operation so generally what's the opposite of microservice let's say a just one big service you have so for example every app that you have suppose you have uber so you just have just one single big service that contains everything like uh, the map the driver information uh, booking payment everything is there in just one single service which is handling all these things so this is called a kind of a monolithic service but the other or the opposite of a monolithic service is a microservice so what microservices architecture says that the things which have different use they should be in different services so simply you would have a separate service for payment you would have a separate service for booking and so on so each service has a different use so like we talked about the principle gather things that change for same reason so all the things which change for same reason we keep that in one service and if they have a totally different operation we keep them in two different services now what's the use of these microservices the basic use is that each service can be deployed in a different way for example you can deploy a java service in different way you can deploy uh, like you have three different services suppose like payment service booking service so you can deploy all of it in a different way each of it can have a different language you can write one service in java one in go maybe one in c++ or whatever language you want to and you can you deploy all of these in a different way you don't have to club these together and and make the deployment go on the same day now suppose uh, you have made just change in some of the payment operation you don't want to change uh, for the other services also like the booking service etc so you won't deploy for those services so you simply just deploy the payment service and the other service would keep functioning that the way they were so now consider an app like tinder so it it has different types of things like you know chat is there then a match service is there where you match with different people then there is a profile in which you maintain your profile then you have your images uh, of each person which are there so uh, there are different types of things which a tender application manages so for each of that you have a different service so you would have a chat service you would have a different match service and you would have a user info service so each of this would do the different job so basically if you keep all of this in just one single service you would have to create just one single service and keep all of it together but with microservice architecture you can create three different services now in microservices also there are different types of uh, uh, services which you can create so uh, like the microservices in itself can inter interact in different ways so for that we have two different types one is orchestration and the other is choreography now we will see how each of these are different from each other so these are nothing but just simply the strategy or the way in which each of the service each of the separate microservice that we have how do they interact with each other so they would at some point point have to interact with each other because suppose you are placing an order 
you have to do a lot of different things there. You have to do payment. You have to track your order. There are you have to inform the rider. You have to inform the restaurant. So there are different things which are there. So uh, we will consider an example of ordering platform like Swiggy and see how it goes. Now let's see how it happens in an orchestrator type of service. So when it is an orchestrator type of service, so what will happen is that you would place an order and there will be one orchestrator. This will be like the main thing which will be managing all other services. This in itself won't be doing anything. So even when you place an order, it will go to the payment service and say, hey, take this payment. And when it responds, it will then call the writer service. Hey, you have to go to this restaurant and find the basically the rider and then inform it and then uh, it will inform the restaurant that this thing has to be prepared so all of this is managed by a one single orchestrator now how this orchestrator works like in, in real life if you have to create such example of an orchestrator how would you do that so this orchestrator is generally uh, this orchestrator is generally uh, some type of a workflow so uh, this workflow what it does is that it will call one service and then uh, wait for its response now this waiting can be done in two ways so you can make an api call and wait for its response till then the connection would remain kind of open so this is just one api call another way is that just make an api call and just finish it and keep polling the service to check if the operation has been completed so this is another way so you basically would have a workflow service which will run this workflow it will make a call and it will wait through any of the mechanisms that are discussed and whenever it gets a response it will call to the other service and that's how the orchestration occurs now we talk about choreography now in choreography we in orchestration we had one orchestrator now in choreography let's do one thing let's remove that orchestrator now how will these services interact with each other so one thing that comes into mind is that this service would notify the rider service, the rider service in turn then notify the restaurant service and so on. Like this order can be reversed or any way possible. So how will these notifications come? So for these notifications to come, you would have to create some kind of a queue. So you would create a queue for each service and the other services would keep on sending the notifications to this particular queue and this other service would keep on processing this notifications so that's how you will be able to inform now why do we need this queue why do we just simply not notify it so it is possible that uh, whenever you notify it this service does not finishes or the job fails that call fails then other steps won't be able to go through you won't be able to retry even if you have to retry you would have to retry this first and then make a call and then further it should happen but it should not be there each of the service should be able to retry so what it does is that it will just put it into the queue the service will consume it similarly it will put it into the next service queue and it will consume it and that's how it will go on so that was all about microservices uh, i hope you liked this video if you did press the like button and I'll see you in the next one.